Good morning, everybody. Joy here. It is Thursday. It's finally Thursday. <laughs> and it's March 24, 2022. And the reason I say, yay, it's finally Thursday is I've been waiting for this fabric to come forever. I ordered it like three weeks ago. And it just it was supposed to get here Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. So it finally got here. So <laughs> I'm so glad it's Thursday this week. Jerry and I are getting ready to hit the road and head to Durant and Calera and I don't know where else. Um, we're taking a glider and a footstool that goes with it to a girl that's about to have a baby. Uh, Jerry advertised it on Marketplace or something. Anyway, she didn't have a way to come get it, so we're just going to take it to her today. Then we got to do some grocery shopping and, of course, go out to lunch at my favorite place, Jimmy's Egg. We always have breakfast when we go there. <laughs> Yes, but I have lost a few pounds, and I've been drinking a shake at night. So, I don't know, I might have to slap my hand and not let myself order that waffle with the strawberries and blueberries on it today. But I don't know, I usually don't have much luck with that. <laughs> I love that thing. Remember I had it on my birthday last year? All right, look at my book, y'all. It is just absolutely falling apart. <laughs> I really need to just order another one from Amazon. And I don't know why. I've, it's the only time I've ever used it in all the years I've had it. But I don't know. I guess the innards wear out after so much time. I don't know why. We're going to talk about lifting others up today. And I have something to say about this. As it pertains to me, as always, for those of you who like to hear me tell you little stories. Lifting others up. There's something deep within us that loves to be first, to win, to be in. We elbow up through degrees, titles, possessions, rights, privileges, connections, seniority, and the like. But once we reach our goals, then what? God does not separate us from those who are lower on the career ladder than we are. He tells us to pull them up with us. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. Aliens in Egypt? Hmm. <laughs> I don't believe I've been there. <laughs> I am the Lord your God. That's Leviticus 19.34. In a few words, God both levels and lifts us. You were an alien too, and I am your Lord God. So that's another quote from the Bible. Do you know someone who needs a lift today? And that was written by Jan Carlberg in The Hungry Heart. Let me give you some scriptures to go with it. Romans 12, 15, and 16. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. Romans 14.19 Let us pursue the things which make for peace, and the things by which one may edify another. Those are good. Now, I don't really agree with what the lady wrote there. Um, I don't think a lot of us have to keep on getting degrees and moving up, 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 up. I knew a lady one time who actually was like that. Her name was Catherine. And for a while, she was married to the man down the street in the big pink house. And um, she was a quilter, and so we started spending time together and taking classes together. But she told me that her mother hated girls. And her mother evidently had two boys and then this lady, one girl. And she told her her whole life she hated her. And no matter what she did, she never could be good enough. Well, and so Catherine kept going up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder in degrees, in college degrees. She had all kinds of master's degrees and other degrees, and I've never been to college, so I don't even understand all that. Um, 
but no matter what she did. And, and then she would make speeches, and she would go and she would do special things, you know, by her career. She taught at college. She was a college professor. And she would be invited to go do things because she was so smart and so special and had so many degrees. And no matter what she did, she would tell her mom, Oh, Mom, you won't believe what I got invited to and what I got to do. And her mother would say, Well, that's nothing compared to your brother. Well, your brother did this and your brother did that. This woman was messed up. She actually, when I knew her, was on her 10th husband. So I, I was not like that. My mother loved all her kids. She had three girls and one boy. And the one boy and the youngest girl were her favorite, and she told us a lot that they were. <laughs> but I was the oldest. And I was a fast learner, and I loved to learn. But when I found out you got to go to school, and they were going to teach you things at school, and I had my little red plaid metal lunchbox, and I got to get on a bus and go to school, I just thought, that was the sun, the moon, and the stars. I was so excited. So I'm just the type of personality that likes to learn, and I learned quickly, a lot more quickly then than I do now. <laughs> but I never was the kind that had to be the head of the class. I never was the kind that had to be in the popular group. In fact, I always thought the popular group was goofy, and I never wanted to be in the popular group. But the popular girls liked me. I guess because of my personality. And this is, you know, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. And there was a girl that I went to school with. Her name was Mary Wilson. Same class. We were always in the same class, same age. And Mary Wilson had epilepsy. And back in those days, you know, way back in the olden days, I'm 71, um, I guess they didn't have medications to treat it like they do now. And so quite often... Mary would have a spell, and she would fall on the floor, and her, her dress, she would kick her legs and move her arms crazy, and her tongue would stick out, and it was like she was going to choke, and um, I would get down on the floor with her, and I would hold her dress down. You had to wear dresses then. I would hold her dress down so it wouldn't come up. And I would try to hold her arms, and I would stay there with her till her spell was over. Well, the other girls just laughed at her. They laughed at her and made fun of her, and they didn't want anything to do with her. And they told me several times, Joy, you could be popular. You could run with us popular girls if you quit being friends with her. Well, <laughs> I just thought that was the meanest, most hateful, most awful thing. And I couldn't have cared less about being their friend. I thought, Why on earth I won't be your friend when you're so mean to Mary? So that was my personality. But I have also known the girls, the popular girls that get popular for some reason. And there's usually one that's the head popular girl. And the other ones are like they're slaves, they're clones. It's just, oh, to me it is just absurd. So I never was the type that had to be the head of the class, had to be the smartest, had to make the best grade. But I always did make good grades and did do really good in school and did really good in my jobs and my career just for me because I wanted to always have wanted to do the best. I'm a perfectionist and I always did want to do the best. So my bosses always loved me. The other girls that would work in the office would say, you make us look bad while they're sitting there polishing their fingernails. And I would just say, I don't make you look bad, you make yourself look bad. So I don't know. I'm the personality I am. Other people are the personality they are. Everybody has their situation they grow up in. And I can't imagine your mother saying she she wanted you to be a boy and she can't stand girls. I can't imagine how horrible that would be to grow up with. My parents always told me I was very smart. My mom always said, oh, learning things like falling off a log for you. And my daddy always told everybody I ran everything. I uh, was a secretary at General Electric, my very first job when I was 18 and pregnant. I was a secretary at GE, and um, I just had a great interest on in how things work. You know, how does this machine, I was a type of, you know, I typed over 100 words a minute, and back then it was a <coughs> and um, you had to do everything in duplicate and triplicate with carbon paper. <laughs> so when I wasn't typing, I would go around and I would see what other people did for their job. And I would say, oh my gosh, what's that machine? What does it do? And there used to be this machine 
they had this tape. The tape was about this wide, and it was metal, like foil, like stiff foil. And it would go through the machine, and the machine would punch holes in it. And I used to watch that girl do that. I just thought, oh my gosh, that is so cool. How does that machine do that? Oh my goodness, can you teach me how to do it? And so the girl would teach me how to use the machine, just because I just wanted to know. So if that girl went on vacation, her boss would come get me and say, hey, would you come run this machine while this girl's on vacation? And it happened with several different people's jobs. And so my father also worked for this company, for General Electric. And he was in a different building. But he, of course, you know, I'm his daughter, and so he knew what I was doing, and um, I would tell him, oh, I learned this machine, I learned that machine. So some, somebody, one of his friends or people would come over for their yearly, monthly, daily prayer meeting, they had them all the time. And how's your kids? Well, Joy runs GE. Joy practically runs General Electric. <laughs> it's just, so I'm just telling you, my parents always told me I was smart and celebrated my successes. Not that I ever had a college degree or not that I ever was the, you know, anything important anywhere. I was a secretary. But um, they always bragged on me that way, so that was really nice. But I did not have to be better than the girl next door or better than the girls I went to school with or better than the people that I worked with. I just was me <laughs> and I did my own thing. So I don't understand what the lady's talking about in the book about, you know, if you're like mega, mega, got college degrees and you're the president of IBM, that you shouldn't treat people that are, you know, cleaning the floor and the toilet any different. And I totally agree with that. But I don't understand people that would think that somebody lower down the ladder wasn't as important as they are. I'll tell you what, companies are run by the low level positions in the company. We had 21 employees, you know, and I tell you what, those employees were extremely important, extremely. We had one little girl came in there. She'd uh, gotten pregnant when she was very young. She had a little boy, and I think she was pregnant again, and she was like 18 years old, and she had never done anything. She worked for a while at a hardware store, and I hired her, her name's Cody, and um, we were looking for somebody to clean the building once a week. And so she applied, she said, can I, and you know, she is, I, I don't remember, she'd just gotten pregnant. I don't think she was very pregnant, or she got pregnant right after we hired her or something. But anyhow, she now has three grown kids. But <laughs> she came in, she was the cutest, cutest, most darling little girl. Hair down to here blonde, thick, curly hair, and just sweet, soft-spoken, and she came in to apply for that job. I'm like, why on earth are you applying to clean our building? My goodness. So, um, hired her to do that. Well, the other employees immediately fell in love with this girl, and this girl was like me, and she would go around to all the people that worked there, and she'd say, I'm done doing my cleaning job. Is there anything I can do for you? Can I do some filing? Can I do your trash? Can I do this, can I do that? And so she started helping all the other people. Well, she ended up working for us for, goodness, 20, 25 years. Oh, from the day we hired her till we sold our store, that's how long she worked for us. I mean, she's a grown woman, she's got grandbabies now. But she turned out to be a diamond in the rough, a jewel. She was the best customer service representative, the best receptionist, the best caretaker. She was just, she was a wonderful people person, which is what you need when you're serving people. We had a medical equipment business and people would come in to buy wheelchairs and commode chairs and bath benches and hospital beds and things like that. And a lot of them would come in to buy certain supplies. And Cody learned those people's names she knew their names. She walked right up to them when they came in the door. Sometimes she would see them drive up in the parking lot. She would go out in the parking lot, help them out of their car and bring them in the building. Well, I'll tell you what, to me, that girl was the highest employee at Family Medical Supply. She was the highest because of her attitude. Always had a smile on her face. Never got crazy and upset like I do. Um, 
I mean, something awful could happen, and she just took it in her stride, and she just kind of like Jerry, you know, different personalities. And she was just wonderful, just wonderful. So I never have felt like the people she's talking about in the book, but <laughs> if any of you are <laughs> presidents, you own a really huge business, and you're super, super important and big, please remember the little people are the ones that run your business. And be sure to appreciate them and love them just the same as all the others. So that's all I have to say today. I gotta get ready to go buy groceries. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>